Uh, you know, what's funny too, is that uh, the last few days we've been uh, running the CEO freedom challenge. And, um, and so I was helping her, she was, she got it first. And so I was helping her and then now oh, I got it. And then, you know, she was helping me. So anyway, good to see you all. Uh, we are back in action. Hold on. Let me get rid of that uh, sound. All right, good. John Lavinia here with you. Welcome to our success mastermind for Monday, the 23rd of May. 2022 the birthday boy is in the house hooray yay <laughs> happy birthday to you uh, hey gwen <laughs> gwen can you sing happy birthday i love it happy birthday that's perfect, perfect. <laughs> that's how it would sound if I was singing it, which is why I asked you. <laughs> we got to hear, uh, we got to hear um, Glenn sing opera last week, and it was amazing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Good time. So, um, so topic for today. Well, let me first start with our housekeeping. We do have three more chapters of the legendary Traveler's Gift by Andy Andrews. We're going to go hang out with uh, Chamberlain and uh, Cristobal Colon, right? Christopher Columbus for all you English speakers, right? We're going to go, we're going to travel some more here. So um, <clears throat> see us at 9 p.m. Eastern tonight for more thrills and excitement on that. Are you guys enjoying this book? Those of you who are digging in, I know Glenn read it in one sitting. So um, yeah, good times, good times. All right, so that's 9 p.m. Eastern tonight. To it. The second for the second time, it's yeah. really good. Oh, there you go. Very good. All right. So I was thinking today, as we're kicking off another week, I was thinking about um, like back to basics, but basics in terms of um, you know, there's a there's a concept which is um, we, we've talked about several times, which is that you know when you outflow, you inflow. Like the tide, the tide goes out, the tide comes in. If you want to exchange with the marketplace, well, then you put out value, you, you bring in money or some exchange of value, right? And one of the things that I have found, uh, which has been not my strong suit, is consistent outflow, like consistent promotion, consistent, consistently impinging upon an ever-expanding audience of ideal you know, customers, potential customers, et cetera. And one of the people who I know who are better than me at that sort of thing, at the consistent part of that, okay? And also a really good copywriter and everything else is my secret weapon, Shannon Lavenia. So I thought who better than to help me put thoughts together today as I'm just <laughs> reawakening from two days and like, <laughs> then Shannon, hey Shannon. Welcome hey. To yeah. Hey everyone, it's good mm -hmm. to see you. And uh, I'm still a little bit m mental foggy, a little bit mentally foggy. Not both of us. No. Yeah. Head congestion. Head <laughs> congestion. Oh, my, my, new, my new name is Secret Weapon. <laughs> John's pretty giddy today. Um, good. So consistency. Oh, we did get chickens this weekend, too. So we got chickens. Oh, yeah. We got chickens. And I... Uh, and they're pretty awesome. My daughter's so happy. John's laughing. I've wanted chickens since we had our first house. And there's always been a reason we couldn't have them. And now we live in Florida and I'm almost 50 and I want chickens, damn it. So my daughter wanted chickens. So we've got, we've got chicks. We've got four super cute, adorable little chicks uh sure you can yes <laughs> trinity's really excited because she's gonna did you guys hear her yell yes yes <laughs> is it show and tell time <laughs> it's show and tell time um you know when we talk about consistency i will tell you that my daughter is the most consistent person i know when it comes to nagging us about something <laughs> that she wants to get and, and to have, and to just being relentless, relentless. So, 
Um, one of the things that I was working on yesterday and one of my goals um, for this year is to have six months of social media posts done and scheduled um, for the rest of the year. And the reason for that is I, I need to put out consistent content. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't going to be relevant content that happens on you know a time okay here here she comes oh so cute give me one of them I, that one's jelly this one's jelly can you believe how cute this little guy is gorgeous this is an easter egger which means that they he he'll she will lay colored eggs. Just random oh. colored eggs. Like orange or green or blue. And then the other one is a Rhode Island red. And we got we got this this kind. <laughs> They're just so cute. Lay yeah. reddish brown right. eggs. They lay reddish brown eggs. <laughs> and uh we got these because they're super friendly when they grow up. They're like really really nice but they're so cute right yeah easter eggers aren't a defined okay, here. breed okay no go bring me some hand sanitizer when you're done because i can't wash my hands right now you're, when um, i look at your daughter i see my granddaughter oh that's she awesome look, they look they could be sisters they look and they're they're both the same age too yeah they, they look so much alike oh that's awesome yeah um no missy we didn't get roosters we did not want to upset our neighbors and I don't want to make lots of little baby chickens. I, I really just want to have the eggs. And uh, after being in Kauai for a week where the whole island is overtaken with roosters that cockadoodle do all day long, uh, we definitely didn't want to do that. Bring at 4 a.m. every day. Yeah, at 4 a.m. Um, so one of my goals is to have six months of content scheduled. And what that means is that, you know, I really had to sit down and just go through, you know, what is my audience? One, one, who is my audience, right? Like who is my audience? Um, that's important to know. Um, two, what do they, you know, want or need, you know? So once you know your audience, like what do they want and need? What do they want to know more about? Um, three, how can I get people thinking in a new way about, problems and solutions, right? It's putting out content. Um, four, sharing lessons learned um, that could help others have an easier, faster, more enjoyable experience, right? So uh, lessons learned. And what type of content does my audience want to consume? Now, I know that mostly what's going to provide the most value to my audience is going to be um, doing lives, trainings, things like that. But that's not something I'm going to do every single day, right? Like I'm not going to go and do a live training every day. Um, it, one, I'd run out of topics, but two, that's, that's a lot, right? There's a lot of prep that goes into doing a live training um, and I got to keep in people engaged during the, during the downtimes, right. During the times between trainings, which means that I have to be putting out consistent content every single day. The, I would say the number one, um, challenge that we find when we're onboarding people into our coaching program that already have a product, you know, they have an offer, and they're just not making as not uh, as much money as they would like to with that is that they're not putting out the amount of promotion and content that they need to in order to impinge on an audience enough to get those people converting um converting into customers right and there's a a great underestimation underestimation of how much effort or how much content actually has to go out in order to impinge on an audience. So when you think about it, the average person spends about four hours per day on electronics and social media. That's average, right? 
it's kind of shocking, right? So one sixth of their day, or if we look, if we assume that they're sleeping for eight hours of the day and they're up 16 hours of the day, that's 25% of their day is, is on some type of platform, right? And when they're on that platform, they're getting inundated with, with content, inundated with information. And if you're not part of that flow, part of that content that's going at them, or you're not the content that they're going to look to consume, then you're way behind all the other guys, right? You're way behind everybody else. And you're probably not even in the forefront of their mind. Um, so to make yourself kind of the go-to person or well-known, then you want to get your content out there. The same is true if you're selling an e-commerce product, right? Like doesn't mean you have to be social media posting all day, every day, but it does mean that your ads have to be running a lot, right? Getting in front of people and pinging, um, on people. Um, and they have to be, uh, making enough of an impact that somebody will get moved through the emotional curve of the buying decision. Um, you know, like if, when people first see something, it's not usually the first time they, they buy it. Um, it's, it takes multiple times, right. Um, in order for somebody to want and buy something, um, I'm going to pass this over back to you, John. I've got a, um, a question on that. So you mentioned four things. You actually enumerated them. I think they were very valuable because there's a question that comes up a lot of times for people. What do I post about? What do I email about? We're talking social media posts right now, but <clears throat> we're basically talking about out outflowing communication, right? So, so are there these categories that you just mentioned? Right. Did anybody take notes on that? I, I didn't. I failed to. Shannon, could you? Well, what I was saying is you have to know who your audience is. Mm -hmm. Right. You have to know what they want or need. Um, you know, you can find that out by asking. Um, and. Um, how to get you, them to think in different ways. Uh, I got right. some of it down. Yeah. How, how to get you. them to think in a different way. And then lessons learned. That's right. So they can have a better experience. And That's I wrote right. down problems and solutions. Yeah. Yes. Problems and solutions. And then we're going to add one to that too, because we're not just about all giving, you know, helpful content. We're also about making money. And the way that you make the money is you make the offer. So mm -hmm. the other thing is your, your content is also going to be about making offers, right? So, um, the, those contents, like keeping that in mind when you're creating your content is going to be really, really important. So mm -hmm. when we're making, when I'm making six months worth of content and content to go out every day for six months, that's a lot of posts, right? That's like 180 posts, that we're generating um, to, and then we'll recycle those back through, right? So we can reuse the same posts over and over again. Um, but we're, those are, that's what we're thinking, right? So an example uh, of a couple of posts, right? I have a branding agency. So I'm going to show a before and after, right? And tell a little story about it, right? Um, what are people looking for when they're looking at your social media posts or you're looking at your social media? Um, another type of post would be an inspirational quote, right? But I'm not just going to put an image up with a quote. I'm going to tell a story about that quote because everybody posts quotes. Who cares, right? It, it gets noticed, it gets consumed, but it won't get engaged unless you talk about the relevance of that quote unless you, you refer to, you know, how that quote has made a difference, mm -hmm. um, in your life. So, um, one thing I'll, I'll offer to you mentioned, um, actually making an offer and doing that about 20% of the time. So like 80, 80% mm -hmm. is, is value added. 20% is making an offer call to action, stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. 
-hmm. right? So you're not going to always be, you know, like John and I have a Melaleuca business, right? Which all you guys know. Um, some of you guys do too. Um, we're not, I'm not online talking about Melaleuca all the time, right? I'm not pushing products in people's faces about it. But what I do do is I talk about, Hey, just hired a new cleaning person. She's super happy that we use non-toxic chemicals. Right. And I shot a picture of it. And then I had a ton of people asking me, what do you use? Mm -hmm. Right. So the other aspect of this is that you're creating curiosity, right? Not satisfying it. The, the worst thing you can do that I see people do all the time in network marketing and MLM, and I even see other, other agencies do this, is they're like, oh, you know, one day special only today, 25% off, contact me. And nobody ever does. No one ever contacts them, right? No one ever reaches out to them is like, hey, can I have the 25% off one day special? It just doesn't happen that way. Um, and they do it on their, their private wall and with the assumption that like a million people are going to, to see it and jump on it. And then there's, and then the, the outcome of that is this inherent disappointment that comes because they did a promotion, a, right. They did one promotion and it didn't work. And now they're all down in the dumps about it and they don't do anything else right? Where I might do 50 promotions, you know, 47 of them don't work. Three of them totally crush it. And I take home, you know, bags of cash. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, that's the biggest difference between, um, people who market inconsistently or market and get very emotionally attached to it. And people who are just constantly pushing out the promo with no emotional attachment and, um, and wanting to just have that success and growth, right? I want to jump in on that too. So one of the, the points that you mentioned is that um, figuring out what people want, which you can ask, right? You can, you can uh, survey you know, the uh, ideal, you know, target audience and kind of find out what's, what's relevant to them. <clears throat> One of the things that I noticed um, is that just this past week, we were at uh, the convention and I got to uh, talk with people about what attracted them to, you know, the, the company, the opportunity, what have you. And one of the things that I heard was that it was something somehow related, but, but it wasn't directly, in other words, it wasn't the, the product itself. Um, now for a lot of people who know, we, we, um, we promote, you know, made in America, non-toxic and all this, the whole, the whole made in America thing. And, you know, um, patriotic and all that is like a major attractor for, for people that, uh, you know, may or may not be directly interested in, you know, what's the actual product that you exchange money for? Uh, oh, but I get to vote with my dollars and, and, you know, do, do something, you know, for, you know, my country and all that. That's, that's a nice hook, right? Now, how would I, how would I know that had I not, you know, surveyed the scene, right? So a lot of times where, where Shannon was talking about, you know, creating interest, but not satisfying interest, whatever the offer happens to be, uh, we shouldn't show all our cards, especially where, where people have such a short attention span on social media. Um, what do we know? The, the surest way to learn nothing is to think you already know. So if you're, if you're just like in virtual, in a virtual sense, dropping your pants right there, I mean, it, where's the mystery? The, <laughs> like dating, right? Shana, you've used this, this, uh, this analogy before, right? It's like, well, you're going on your first date you know, there should be some, you know, mystique or something about it. You know, it's like, yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's not all, all at once. Right. So we want to create, hopefully I'm making sense. We want to create interest, but not satisfy interest. Um, now I'm thinking, how does that relate to, uh, well, Janet's here, right? So Janet does calligraphy. So Janet can do 
uh, value added posts or maybe before and after, you know, here's the, here's the, the product that her student produced before the training and here's the beautiful calligraphy after the training, right? So stuff like that could also work, but quite obviously it's, it's calligraphy, right? That's, that's the product. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but, but why else besides the product itself, here's what I'm thinking. Why else besides being able to produce beautiful calligraphy, would somebody be interested in that? And, and I know that, that Janet in her case has mentioned, you know, there's, there's a bit of a, a meditative or, you know, there's, um, you know, it's not what you just see on the paper. There's more to it than that. So uh, I'm thinking for everyone, <clears throat> and I use Janet as an example, because I, I know almost nothing about calligraphy, right? But, um, but whatever, whatever we're pitching in the marketplace, how else or why else would people be interested in that without even knowing what the product is, <laughs> you know? So um, there, there comes a point where, where you don't just get paid for what you do, you get paid for who you are. And I have had um, many, many, many examples where people said to me, you know what, John, I didn't even know what the offer was. I just knew that it was you and I wanted to work with you. Now, my ego likes hearing that, um, but it's not just me. It's not like a John special or something. It's just, <clears throat> it's just that when you get in communication with someone uh, about, you know, something that they already, you know, they already want or the, the, a problem or something that's already real for them and you, and you hear them and you understand them, they just like you more. And then, you know, they're open to solutions. Okay. So, so in that way, I think, uh, this whole idea that we're talking about today, which is outflowing more, right? Producing more content or making ourselves more known in the marketplace. Uh, that's valid. And even if you're not like, you don't consider yourself a super spectacular communicator. Uh, as Grant Cardone said, best known beats best. So don't be so damn concerned about, do I have to be perfect or something? No, <laughs> no best known beats best. Is Grant perfect? I, I would say no. A resounding no. Yeah. I'll be sure to send that to him. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John? Um, yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, the, um, you know, there's people who offer the same things. Um, what be it uh, in person teaching, where it's a product, whatever it is, and um, I'm I'm starting to realize that yes, what you're offering may be offered by others, but it's who you are, and and how you come across as to how um, as to you getting the business, people wanting to be with you, just what you said, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm starting to understand that that even though. You know, some of it may be the same where the approach a little bit different, but but ultimately it's it's you. Mm -hmm. and, and that's very exciting. <laughs> that's right. Birthday. That's a great realization, Janet. I don't know. I, I, I don't know anybody that has like they're the only one of whatever they do on this whole planet. Right. So every town has, has multiple restaurants, there's multiple plumbers, there's lots of electricians, there's, you know, like every business has competition um, of people that do the exact same thing that they do. And just what you said, it's like, what is your unique selling proposition, right? Like what is, why, why should people get started with Janet? There's tons of other business coaches, lots and lots of other business coaches out there. Right. Um, lots of other direct selling companies. I mean, it's, um, but that's part of social proof, right? That's why we get lots of testimonials, um, show proof of what you're doing, um, you know, create special offers, grow an audience that knows, likes, and trusts you. All that. Mm hmm. What do you guys think of this? Uh, we heard from Janet. Any other thoughts on how you could promote not just a product, but but an offer? Understand that an offer includes a product, 
but isn't limited to just the product, right? What are we wrapping that in? And how is that going to stick with the people who are your, your ideal potential customers? I know we've, we've done this in, in multiple ways. <clears throat> and um, we got people here who are engaged in multiple, you know, different offers. Uh, and perhaps I gave you some ideas. Anybody got some ideas on this? Glenn, you've got your hand up. Hi, Glenn. I know. I know. Happy birthday, Reverend. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, it's interesting. You're talking about people don't buy just your product or just your service. They buy you. Um, I agree. More on that in a minute. Um, I, I, I think that in, in our case, you know, with the... Uh, with the barbecue pit company, which by mm -hmm. the way, it's going great guns now. We're we're two to three months out on orders, which is fabulous. Wow. Mm -hmm. and for those who don't know, these are not two hundred dollar, you know, Home Depot barbecue pits. This is like yeah. money. Our entry level pit uh, starts at thirty three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So, so there's that, um, and then it goes up from there. Part of the reason that we're growing and growing very nicely these days is another thing you were saying john what can make the offer or my product attractive is how, how, how do what we've done is we share not just the product not just the people who are involved in our personalities we have also from day one shared our process with the public. In mm -hmm. other words, our uh, operations manager, one of our partners, Paul, on the day we started the company, he launched our, well, actually before that, he launched our Instagram page. And we have documented, you know, through live videos, through recordings, through Instagram and Facebook reels and, and sort of those, those kinds of things, every step in the creation uh, and establishment and growth of this company. I mean, literally from the moment we signed the lease contract on our building, on the building where we are, shaking hands with the owner of the building. Um, when we got our forklift delivered, we took video of them hauling it off the truck. And the build process that we've put in place, the equipment, every time we got a new piece of equipment, before we built our first pit, every piece of equipment, the welders, the forklifts, the plasma cutting table that we use, the masks, the hoods, the welding, everything that we brought in to build this business, to establish our process, establish our warehouse, we documented all of it. And, and because we understood that the kinds of people who are going to be buying pits from us, they want to know that we know what the hell we're doing. So that they have even that much more confidence in the quality of our product. So we've documented and now it, 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 it and yes, our, our operation manager is also a great cook. We are also all three of us pretty good cooks. So we've cooked on our pits, on our products, and show the recipes. Hey, listen, you know, we did just did this with some with some spat, uh, spatchcock chicken, and we use these spices, and blah, blah, blah. And hey, but, and by the way, we were using this on, on our product here, and you can, you know, check out this website, blah, blah. But man, this chicken tastes good after we finished. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just, hey, guys, we're running a special. Come buy a barbecue pit from us. No, it, what we did was we, as I said, I'm repeating myself now, but we documented the creation, the growth of the company, our build process. Every time somebody has come to the shop and checked it out and agreed to buy something from a, we got a picture shaking hands, you know, oh, you know, so, so, uh, so proud of our, you know, buddy, Randy, so glad he's, uh, for his support in, in our, in our, you know what I mean? Things like this. Mm -hmm. And again, so that now we've got people calling us asking for quotes which came from this is who we are this is what we're doing this is how we're doing it now let us show you how we're doing it so the process bottom line for us documenting and sharing going live with our process has been absolutely priceless 
in our growth. And one, just one last thing I want to say. There are certain people, and this is off the topic of the day. Well, sort of off the other topic. There are certain people you can name, each of us could name, who we c could honestly say as we look back on how we met, and how we've gotten along and the conversations and the things we've been through, good, bad, and indifferent, and how time has passed and the relationships have evolved, right? There are probably four men that I could name who I would say have unequivocally changed my life. For the better. You're looking at one of them. Today's his birthday. Uh, I consider it one of the great honors of my life to be able to say that John Lavenia is my friend. Happy birthday, brother. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. That's wow. so moving, Glenn. Hey, Glenn. You make me cry. I'm yep. going to cry too. Um, <laughs> but I don't have the energy to cry. Uh, so I am. Um, We're so I pathetic. Wonder, I, yeah. What a weekend. Oh my goodness. Oh man. Um, what? All right. So you're giving recipes. So yeah, that's, that's value that that's whether you bought my pit or not. Here's the, the secret chicken rub. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. You're giving, you're giving, giving, uh, sorry, pictures Sean. of pictures of the product, uh, like steaks cooking on the grill, right? Look at the steaks. Right, because the you know, end result is the perfectly cooked, you know, chicken or steak or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking also, like, because you're dealing with with competitive, um, cook, you know, barbecue people, they go to co competitions, right? Yes. All you need is is like some champion to like say, you know, and I used that pit to win the prize, the ten grand or whatever it is, right? That one of go. the. One of the things that we did about three weeks ago, uh, we went to a cook-off here in the uh, Houston, Katy area, and okay. the team, the cook team, not employees of ours, you know, they don't work for us, just buddies, you know, friends that we've met through different businesses and so forth. They brought their cook team, they competed in this cook-off, they won three trophies, including a couple of first place trophies, hmm. and it came out later when we posted the pictures the following day or following week, they'd used our pit. You know, so proud to be associated with this winning cook team at the so-and-so cook-off. We didn't even have to say anything about the pit. Couple, 48 hours later, somebody's calling us asking for a quote. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they are. This is like serious. People get really into like the barbecue competitions. <laughs> we just took a deposit uh, Saturday, day before yesterday, we just took a deposit for a guy who heard about us through one of our Instagram videos, and and uh, he he drove like half an hour into the shop to give us a check for a down payment on a one thousand gallon pit. You could put forty briskets on this thing. And just so to give you an idea of the scale, what John was talking about, you're not going to find our pits at the Home Depot. This pit that the guy wants us to build for him is going to cost him approximately $20,000. And he's happy to pay it. Because he understands the quality that we put into our pits. Why? Because he has seen the process. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. That's awesome. John only let me spend two hundred dollars on our barbecue. Just saying. <laughs> uh, trust me, Shannon. Y'all ain't got room for one of my pits in your backyard. Uh, <laughs> what do you think, VA? Thanks, John. Happy birthday, Thank and you. thanks, Shannon, for the reminder. Um, I mean, Glenn, you got me hungry. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I, I wish I had a barbecue whatever now, but I live in a condo or an apartment, so that, that's not going to happen anytime soon, right? You live in a castle. You're still in a castle. <laughs> would it be, uh, with permission of the host, would it be okay if I share my screen briefly just to show, give people an idea of what I put? Are you going to make us like? mouthwater? I can't even taste anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be like, I can't taste or smell. Are <laughs> you looking at juicy steaks torturing <laughs> us Glenn. all right Glenn. all right quick and then we're gonna get back to the va here 
<laughs> All right. Okay. Quick share. This is our thousand gallon pit. My God. Wow. You gotta be kidding me. It looks like a torpedo. Wow. <laughs> yeah. About the size of a torpedo too. It looks like a torpedo. It looks like a like an like a uh oxygen decompression. <laughs> what, what, did, uh, what is all that stuff on top? Is those handles or something? Those those are counterweights. Each of those doors weighs approximately one hundred pounds. And so uh, it, it it's a it's a mu more than anything else, it's a safety peach feature to keep that door from falling back and slamming down to right. unfortunate consequence. Um, the, the, if, you, if you look over on the right, the black box, that is the, that is the uh, what they call the firebox. That's double insulated. And that thing alone is bigger than most home barbecues. Right. Wow. Anyway. Oh, Glenn, we're having a few problems with our railways back in the UK. Meat. We could do with some of those for our railways, I think. <laughs> I'll put you in touch. <laughs> nice. Yeah, a whole new, a whole new line for us. Why not? I mean, yeah, you were saying. Yeah. So I mean, I, you know, a lot of people, you know, from what Glenn was saying, it's not just the product, but they want to be part of something bigger, right, than just a product or a service. So the fact that Glenn and his colleagues or partners, you know, have created this whole story. And in a world where transparency is not the watchword anymore, people are trying to sweep things under the rug. They're trying to hide stuff. Everyone's being secretive, right? So by showing the process of birthing this company and creating what you've created, right? You kind of like drawn people in because now this is so much bigger than just walking into a store and saying, I'll have that one, please paying for it at the counter and going home. They can actually like brag or tell whoever that I've seen this thing from start to finish. So I can, I can vouch that everything that's gone into this one thing I've ordered is as it says on the box, right? So you've included them in something much bigger than themselves. And so they're not just buying the pit at the end of the day. They're buying your story. They're part of your journey. You're almost drawing people in and you're including them in a part of the process they don't get to see, right? And people want that special access, if you want, you know, to, to the to the backstage kind of thing. And, and this is what you've created. So you're adding even more value to what it is, the final product, right? It's not just the price tag. And that's what people are buying into. Secondly, you've tried and tested this and it hasn't fallen apart. If anything, it's won awards, right? So not only are you saying we've gone the extra mile and we're doing something, yes, you can go get a pit at home base or I don't know, Costco or wh wherever else they can go to get these things, right? But you're making this stuff from scratch. So you're, you're saying it's going to be bespoke, right? Your measurements are going to fit whatever space you have, right? And, and because you've done this, people are kind of like going to say, I want to be part of that. And then they know it's been tried and tested and that it works. So what you said on the box is exactly what they're going to get by parting with so much money, right? So all through the process and the, and the, the sale itself, and even after the sale, there's that integrity that's going right through um, the journey, people are looking for real conversations. They're looking for real connections now. And if the last two years is anything to go by where we haven't been able to see friends and family, most people in the true sense of the word, if you, if you put the pit on the one hand and a vacation on the other hand, I mean, now, gosh, I, I don't know how many people are going to, in Europe anyway, are going to be able to fly anywhere. And even if they do, it might not be the ideal holiday they wanted. But this pit is of substance, right? And so they can create so many memories season after season, year after year. It's not going to suddenly disappear. It's not just going to be something on paper like, you know, photos from a holiday, right? This is stuff that they can have birthdays, you know, Memorial Day, you name it, whatever, right? Everyone can gather around this and different groups of people, different memories, but it's still the one product, right? So it's got legs is what, I say, what I'm saying. It's just more than buying a ticket to go somewhere on holiday that's something else you're creating here and then the next thing I was going to say is I don't know if you thought about this but I know here in the UK um restaurants like that could be a whole other line so I know you guys have big properties in the US we don't have that here in the UK and we probably don't have that in Europe right but restaurants that offer barbecue stuff right that could be something they're looking for so once again you just shared 
a snippet of your journey and you've already got me thinking of product line extension or i don't even know what right so you you've opened my mind to seeing this more than just a product with a price tag the possibilities are just there i mean adrian was mentioning our railways right so it's kind of like we're all thinking <laughs> you've so drawn us in with this story that we're engaged already you know and then you've shown us a picture and we're saying wow you know and i'm already thinking what other types of businesses can use this and it's not even my product right so you, you've done something here that if people could understand, and it's, it's also from what Shannon was saying, it's also a numbers game. Maybe the first time you put the Instagram photo up or you spoke about your masks or you spoke about your welders, you probably didn't get a single call. But that consistency, consistency in posting every phase of your journey, you've created that story. There'd be no gaps, right? And then even after the process, you've launched the company, you've done a few sales, you're trying to think of other ways to keep the engagement levels up, right? So I don't even want to quantify how many, I don't know, messages you've sent out there. I'm not surprised you're getting people calling you out of the blue and saying, well, I had a, heard of you from so, so, and so I'd like to place an order. You've already done the numbers in, in terms of the outreaches and now the returns are coming in. But if you, if you quantify the number of messages you've sent out, compared to the sales that are coming in, the difference would be stark. And that's what people fail to understand. It's a numbers game. The number of messages you've got to throw out there to the number of hits you're going to get in return, there's a huge disparity, right? And once people understand this, then they won't be surprised that, okay, I only got 10% return or I got a 0% return. Just increase the number of messages you're sending out, right? So yeah, good on you, Glenn. And yeah. Thank you. Oh, by the way, Ivier, um, yes. half of our current customers are restaurant owners. There we go. There <laughs> you were we talking go. about something long term the slogan. I'll, I'll say this and I'll shut up. I, I didn't want this calls about John. Um, <laughs> our, our company slogan, we don't just build pits. We create a legacy. Excellent. That's it. <laughs> How about Glenn? I, I thought of something. <clears throat> our pits smell so good. The neighbors will come running. <laughs> <laughs> Um, nice. Uh, but I, in all seriousness, I have an idea for you. And then Adrian, I see your hand is up. Um, oh, great. Yeah. Up to you, Shannon. You know, what if, uh, what if when a restaurant buys your, buys your pit, you also give them a marketing plan with it, with like some pre-designed, you know, postcards or, you know, not printed out, but you give them like the graphics and you know, like a little plan of like, how do you announce your new pit, you know, to your, to your, uh, restaurant customers. So they're looking at, you know, this is making their money back pretty quickly too. Mm -hmm. You remember, right. um, when we and we'll hear from Adrian, but you remember, uh, when we lived in Salt Lake city, there was a restaurant down at the bottom of the hill that every Friday was tri tip Fridays. Yeah, they would, they would grill tri-tip steaks, and you could have steak and eggs. Or you could have the steak with the you know lunch or whatever. <clears throat> but everybody cafe. knew. Everybody knew it was tri-tip Fridays. Yeah, and they had an open pit, or I guess an enclosed pit, uh, which they had right next to the building on Fridays, to the <laughs> point where it melted. Melted. Like, <laughs> yeah. They, <laughs> The heat it got melted so the blinds. Yeah, like through the glass, it would melt the blinds. <laughs> like the blinds were all sagged down when they had the fish. Yeah, they weren't. Yeah. They weren't the smartest crew, but their no, food was were. tasty. Yeah, the steak was nice, but anyway, yeah, what do you think, great. Adrian? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a great conversation. A couple of things on what Shannon has said previously in the talk, but then uh, Ivy got me thinking on Glenn's product. Um, yeah, Glenn doesn't want to take over. It's, it, it sort of illustrates the whole talk, really, Glenn. Um, yeah, I was going to suggest franchising and that segues into what Shannon just said, this, I just think there's massive potential here. It's got a fantastic look, this product, and it's got a story. Shannon's suggesting providing a pack, but I was thinking franchise the whole thing. You could provide a whole support package, um, yeah, the recipes, uh, the whole thing, the marketing. I think this is heavily franchisable. I really, really do. I think you can make a fortune out of it doing that. Um, I was also thinking about music festivals, which is why I got onto the franchising, because I think this is the sort of thing 
you would see in the festival village where they have franchise, they have stalls. They pay a percentage back to the festival. They're all over the country to the ones I've been to. You see these um, curry buses arriving. There's a curry bus. There's a guy with a crepe wagons making the French crepe and all that sort of stuff. Um, this is perfect. Already, Adrian, we've already got a booth pre-booked for next year's Houston Livestock Great. Show and Rodeo. It's the biggest perfect. rodeo yeah. in the world, and we're going to be there. Yeah, perfect. It's, this is what I see when I go around the music festivals. They have the village with the various international foods. And the stalls pay pay a feedback, but you know that's a, that's a great market. There are hundreds and hundreds now of these live festivals, music all over the country, all over Europe, all over the states. So that just struck me when Evie was talking. But the franchise idea could work. Um, getting back onto what Shannon was saying, I think um, it's this whole "who are you addressing" problem that Shannon talked about many many times and some time ago. The avatar. And I think I was hung up on this avatar and not really thinking clearly. When you actually delve down, we're not just talking about a particular person. That's the mistake I was making. I was hoping Shannon was going to comment on this. I think she's dropped off there. Um, you, you can actually try to imagine one person. It's more about a group of interests, thoughts. It's not a person that this avatar has to be. And I think you can get hung up on that and think, well, it isn't quite that person. It isn't quite this person. It's more a grouping of feelings, thoughts, processes, emotions. That's the kind of character you're building, in my view, in this in this avatar. And, and that's where I um, that's where I got a bit hung up, just trying to think of a particular person. You know, your average, uh, let's say, person that works in an office, gets up, does this particular thing. It doesn't need to be that narrow. And that's something I'm learning the hard way. I got jammed into having to make it a fairly narrow categorization of a person. But it's more about their interests, their feelings, and their thoughts. Uh, everything that goes by, in my view, and that's that's what I'm I'm trying to be better at. But I'd love to hear Shannon and John on that. Well, I could speak to that. Uh, thank you, Christina. Um, so when we when we identify uh, an ICA, an ideal customer avatar, for whatever the offer happens to be, we're narrowing it down to to one ideal person of which there are many such people, but we're inventing a, a target. We're inventing, here's the customer who specifically wants this. Now, in the case of barbecue pits, there can be multiple ideal avatars. Here's the, the commercial uh, customer, the restaurateur. Here's the competitive barbecue guy or whatever. Here's the just, you know, the barbecuing enthusiast. But the reason we narrow it down to, to one uh, avatar or one person that we're inventing, okay, is so that we can speak directly to the ideal, uh, and there's more of them, okay, but speak directly. Cause like when you watch a video, uh, there's a big difference between talking to, like right now I'm talking to you. Well, I'm actually, I'm talking to a lot of people, right? But right now I'm talking to you, right? And so you're the ideal recipient of this communication. When people get into, hey, guys, and, and whatever, and they're kind of vague on, like, are you really talking to me? One of the things that, that I have found is, the, is the, the downfall for a lot of people when they try to sell one to many, like in a webinar or whatever, is that they, um, and I used to do this, they, they talk to the crowd rather than talking to the ideal customer. Okay, now again, there's multiple people who fit into that avatar mold, but you want to talk directly to them. <clears throat> now, now the, you know, the other avatar, so, so, um, so Glenn's not going to pitch the, you know, the, the uh, competitive guy the same way he's going to pitch the restaurateur. So you're going to have multiple avatars, right? That's, that's fine. But we definitely want to narrow it down to one ideal, and there could be multiples, but one ideal. What do you think of that? That Shannon, the ideal customer avatar and why it's one invented person rather than, hey, guys. Right. Well, yeah, you need to you need to speak to that one person and, and to their um, their problems, their challenges, you know, their struggles um, and what they're dealing with. Right. So it's really important to. um to do that. And then 
the other thing I'll say, and this goes on with what Ivia and, and Adrian were, were speaking of too. Um, and also Jana, because I know what you do for a living with calligraphy, um, you know, and, and Glenn too, you know, when you're putting these things out on social media, um, people don't always respond instantly, but you want to also understand that what you're doing is you're, you're inducing an idea with them, right? So you're creating an idea that then becomes a potential for them, right? Like maybe somebody's like, they never thought of doing calligraphy. Like it never was even in their realm of possibilities. And next thing you know, they find that, you know, they're going through a tough time in life. They'd like to do something creative. They don't really know what it is. Up pops Janet's, you know, beautiful calligraphy and about how it's, you know, stress relieving and all of this. Next thing you know, they want to create something beautiful too. And they're now signing up for your class. Right. But if we're not consistent, we're not putting it out there you know, then it, it never really, it, it never, that idea is never given to them. Right. So we can be the givers of ideas too. Right. Um, Glenn's putting pictures of his, um, of his equipment out there, but now if he's got a picture of the equipment and a crowd around it, you know, and some restaurant owners like, sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, what can I do to get some people in the, in the restaurant? Right. And there's an up pops blends equipment. They're drawing a crowd. Then that, that gives the owner an idea, right? We're giving them an idea too. And that's really where that's the art of, of advertising is when you're giving people the ideas that then fit for them and they become excited about it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, think, one last thing, and I think we're going to end off here unless anybody else has something else. Uh, but um, the legacy, Glenn mentioned the legacy. <clears throat> and if you think of um, like, where could your brand go in the future? Let's say you're just starting out. Let's say you just, you're one day into whatever the project is can you position it in such a way that this will be a legacy? So like Glenn captured the, you know, the arrival of the equipment, the, you know, we just built our first pit and all that. Think of any, any brands like, I don't know, Ferrari, right? So here's Enzo Ferrari, who was tinkering with cars in Italy, right? Here's, uh, you know, uh, the, the Davidson brothers, right? Harley Davidson, right? Here's uh, John Bowers and Roy Wilkins, Bowers and Wilkins speakers. Um, so there's so there's uh, history with that. There's uh, you get to be you're not just buying a Ferrari, right? You're you're buying the whole legacy and you know the lineage of Enzo and all these guys, right? So so maybe maybe think think with that, right? So where is this brand going? And facts tell and stories sell. So tell the story, right? With the humble beginnings and whatever, right? <laughs> Put a little lipstick on that pig, right? <laughs> I love you guys. Hey, thank you for uh, for being here with me on this um, special day. <laughs> I'm going to be back with you here tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to get a little rest between now and then. And uh, we're going to talk about some more Traveler's Gift. Um Adrian, did that did that satisfy the whole avatar um, incongruency? That yes, absolutely. Just got to get better at it. Really, it's uh, it's it's a bit of an art, I think. Uh, just got to keep practicing and trying it. I'm I'm not. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to think about. But no, thanks to you both. It was a great session. I think it was brilliant. And happy birthday. Get well soon, basically, both of you. Oh, great I'm session. Great. Well. great from Shannon as ever. Always fantastic to hear Shannon, and uh, great to hear you as well, John. And birthday boy. Yeah. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. All right. So, uh, all right. Well, we'll be back here at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, thank you all for participating. In the meantime, make it a great day. You absolutely deserve it. We'll see John, you soon. Live long and prosper. I shall. <laughs> Indeed. Good advice, sir.